Good morning and welcome to Power Word Zone and a special warm welcome to new friends of our blogs. Now, uh, we're busy with a discipleship, spiritual growth theme. And uh, last we looked at a God, a better Father God concept, um, namely Emmanuel, God with us and God within us. We infused to the Trinity through Jesus Christ and receiving the Holy Spirit once we get born again. But now we're looking, today we're looking at the instructor. Uh, last we introduced also the trail team or the Mount Grace team, namely Father God, the owner of uh, Mount Grace or the whole universe for that matter and the world. And then we also look at the Holy Spirit, our trail guide, and we will look uh, to the Holy Spirit and his role and his personality in the next episode. But today we're focusing on Jesus Christ, the instructor. Jesus Christ is going to be our coach once we've received him, received him as our Savior and Redeemer in the spiritual growth journey. So let me start with this passage from Philippians 2 verses 6. To 11. Jesus always had the nature of God, but he did not think that by force he should try to remain equal with God. Instead of this, of his own free will, he gave up all he had and took the nature of a servant. He became like a human being and appeared in human likeness. He was humble and walked the path of obedience all the way to death. His death on the cross. For this reason God raised him to the highest place above and gave him the name that is greater than any other name. And so in honor of the name of Jesus, all beings in heaven and on earth and in the world below will fall on their knees and all will openly proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2 Verses 6 to 11, and I'm reading from the Good News Version. Now, this whole passage here for me is about incarnation. And remember the concept I introduced to you, infusion. So keep that in the back of your mind. So here we can see the incarnation of God through His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world, into us. And this is about a humble, loving servant. We must try and imitate as disciples this concept of a loving, loving, obedient servant. That is what Jesus Christ was to the world and was to us. He is the manifestation of complete love. Yes, we cannot always love 100%. And that's where there is always forgiveness and mercy. But at least we must strive after Christ-likeness and follow this humble, loving servanthood of Jesus. Now, it's emphatic. The Old Testament and the prophet Isaiah prophesied the, 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 prophesied the uh, Messiah. And we read of Jesus' deity in the Gospels. It's emphatic that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's a Savior. He's the only way. And John 14 verse 6 uh, uh, says, Jesus in his own words said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one goes to the Father but through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one goes to the Father but through me. Now, Jesus is the way. He's the only way. We can trust him. He appeared to so many people after his resurrection. He was raised. There is power in his resurrection. And in this whole infusion into God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son and the Holy Spirit, there is triple Trinity power. So we can rely on this triple trinity power as we climb this mountain of Christ, as we grow in the Spirit. And then also we know that most other so-called prophets are still in the grave. I don't want to mention the religions, but most of those, no, not most, every, all the so-called prophets are still in the grave. But there's only one that was raised from the dead. And that was Jesus Christ. 
we can live in that insurance of eternal life and a new life now because Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life so he has life he has the keys to eternal life and to a better life in discipleship and then also Jesus said he is the truth so the truth is the gospel the word Jesus said he's the truth he's the logos he is God incarnate in the Logos, the word, the truth. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. We must get to know Jesus through the bread of life, the word, the Logos. That is why it is so important that we study the Bible. And like I requested last time, start reading the New Testament from Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, through to the book of Revelation. Get to know Jesus Christ through the word, through the Logos the bread of life. And if we spend time in prayer, praise and worship, we will get to know these course leaders, Father God and the Holy Spirit, the trail guide, even better. But my emphasis is on the instructor, Jesus Christ, today. We can trust him. He is a worthy instructor. He paid with his blood on the cross, he was a final sacrifice, and now he is also our final high priest. He is our instructor with an emphasis on in. This gospel story for me is the most perfect a romance story how we are reconciled to God through Christ, and we are. Uh, we have the companion of the Holy Spirit or the trail guide. More about the Holy Spirit next time. But now Jesus Christ, in love with God and also in love with us, he becomes his humble, loving servant. So we are infused into Christ and into the Trinity once we become born again. Once we open our hearts and receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are incarnated by God uh, and the Trinity. We are now in relationship with Father, Son and uh, uh, Holy Ghost. So we must become like Jesus and we must read the word to get to know Jesus and we must be get empowered by the Holy Spirit. So it's that infusion into the Trinity and then that transformation by the Holy Spirit and the Word that matures us. And then that transfusion to the world. It will mean nothing if we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. And as we climb this mountain of grace, that we do not transfuse or pass on this uh, love and grace to the world. This whole incarnation story is such a comparison in, in the, uh, of a, a TV series that I watched. Remember the series called uh, USA Boss Undercover. USA Boss Undercover, where the MD of owner of the company would um, work with the staff and he's disguised, but he, he becomes like an ordinary staff member to improve the service of the staff and the profits of the company and to smooth this whole process of his company. He works with the staff. He sees the troubleshooting. He sees the, pro the, the problems and the challenges of staff. Now that for me is very a, a very good comparison, an example of this incarnation. So you can imagine Father God the owner of Mount Grace Company, Father God, he manifests through Jesus Christ, his son, incarnate to us, infused to us the day we receive the Trinity into our lives. And then Father God, through Jesus Christ, manifests Jesus Christ was this uh, hundred obedient, loving servant. So Jesus then, veiled, taken off, and slowly he's get, getting revealed to his disciples and the world as the Son of God, the true and one and only Messiah. Jesus then, in an overall, rolled up the sleeves and became a servant. He was a humble servant. He served the world in love and humility. That is what God wants from us. But we can only do that through grace, love and triple trinity power. So this is your chance today to invite the instructor into your life so you can be into a relationship 
with the Trinity. In Jesus' name.